Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, thank you guys so much for all the positive comments you've been leaving me lately, all the support, the encouragement. That's what really what keeps me going. It really it's what keeps me motivated to keep putting content out for you guys. Um, the majority of you guys have been really, really kind, uh, really thoughtful. So I, I really do appreciate that. And you guys are helping me get back in the algorithm. There have been a few negative people, and I just want to say because I say it before every single reading. I channel multiple energy groups on here. So some of these storylines, some of these energy groups will be for you and some of them won't be because honestly, I have no tolerance for people that, you know, comment on my videos and they argue with them and they say, oh, this is wrong. I don't want this man back, blah, blah, blah. Then it's not your storyline. It's it's not all about you. Um, it's, it's for somebody else. If you're not resonating with the message, if you don't want your person back and I'm channeling someone that, you know, you, there's mutual love, then it's not your storyline. Move along. It's not all about you. Somebody else wants to see, wants to hear that message. Um, same for the energy group that I've been channeling. I notice people, you know, not liking those videos as much or they're getting triggered by those videos. And I don't know if it's people who... I don't know if it's people who just don't like are in that energy group and they don't want to hear about their ex and they're pissed about it or if it's just people who are not in that energy group and they're tired of waiting for their their own storyline to come out like I do you know I, I will get to other energy groups as well here in the near future but but again it's not all about you even if you don't want to hear about your ex even if you are in that energy group there's there's a thousand other people that do want to hear about it that do want to watch the videos um, so move along. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm just not going to deal with that in the comments. Like if you're sending negative energy, I would highly recommend not doing that because I'm highly protected and it's, it's not going to end well for you. And I'm not saying I'm going to mess you up. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying I am divinely protected. It's something that just kind of comes naturally. So there, and there's no need for it. There's really no need for it. Like if you're not resonating with the storyline or you don't want to hear the storyline and just get off my channel then if you hate it that much, just you, there's no need to leave negative, hateful comments. Just, just move along. Um, no one's making you be here. No one's making you listen to the messages. So whoever that's for just, um, yeah, but I, I do want to say, um, most of you guys are, are really supportive and I really appreciate that. And I totally support you guys venting in the comments. Like if you guys want to vent and you want to let off some anger or some pain or whatever, or you just want to vent about what your ex is doing, that's, that's totally fine. I understand that. That's a much different energy than someone who's deliberately being a hater or somebody who's you know, deliberately trying to send negativity or trying to take their anger um, for their ex out on YouTube readers. That's it's not OK. We're not doing that. Um, a lot of tarot readers get tired of that. It's not just me and a lot of empaths, a lot of psychics, a lot of healers. Like there's a lot of really toxic psychic vampire types that think that people like me can be used as a punching bag. And it, it's not happening here. You are, you are not going to go off on the comments and, and unleash all your hatred towards your ex out on me and tell me how wrong the reading is and blah, 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 just because it's not for you or because it's triggering. Like, if you don't like it, move along. Um, we're just, we're not doing that shit here. Um, but anyway, most of you, most of you guys, I really appreciate, like, appreciate it. Like, 99% of you are amazing. So there's, you know, there's definitely more good energy than bad energy here for sure. Um, okay. They'll be back. Manifest. Tell the universe exactly what you want. Earth sign. So there might be an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. They could have this heavy placement in their chart that, uh, you're going to be hearing from soon. <coughs> I think that you need to manifest it though. I think someone needs to tell the universe exactly what you want, because for some of you, it's like, you want this person back, but you don't fully believe in it or you're not. This does feel like a new energy group. So this probably is for some new people here. But it's like you can manifest communication with this person. But you need to let the universe know that that's what you want, because I think some of you are sending the universe like mixed messages. You're like, I hate this motherfucker. I'm done. Wait, no, I love him. I want him back. 
wait, I'm done, wait, I want him back, wait, like, like, you gotta, like, be clear, especially with Mercury Retrograde, all the miscommunication, it's not just miscommunication with people, it's miscommunication with our spirit guides as well, you have to really clearly and directly communicate with them as well, so you have to be like, no, I don't, I know I said I hated him the other day, I was just frustrated, I don't mean it, wait, wait, <laughs> I actually do want to manifest this, I actually do want communication, or I do want commitment with this person, like, be really clear about what you want, um, I don't think it'll ha necessarily have to be a few months, but there is, you know, there is an element of patience here, hmm, problem with it, so this person could be going through some kind of addiction, could be, like, sex, drugs, gambling, uh, maybe just focused on finances right now, I just feel like their focus is elsewhere, but they are thinking about you still. We're going to get into tarot, too, to see. Yeah, so we have cycles, fate, karma, something ending, something beginning. So they're probably going through a karmic cycle right now that they need to wrap up. And I feel like Mercury Retrograde is actually bringing that karmic cycle up for them. <coughs> oh, my gosh, guys. Sorry. Honeymoon. Divorce. Yeah, for some, they might even be dealing with a third party, but it's not going to go well. Like, it's going to be one of those very, um, it's like very fast-moving energies, like like the honeymoon phase, uh, and then someone ends up being used. Either your person uses uses them or the, the third party uses, uses them. Take it as it resonates, but someone's going to end up being used, and there's going to be a separation because of it, so I don't really see it. Whatever it is, I don't really feel like it's going to last. Um, I just feel like it's going to be one of those things that, like, you know, ends as quickly as it starts. Like, there's going to be a lot of passion, a lot of lust and excitement. And then there's someone's just going to get used. Someone's going to get used for money or sex. And, and there's going to be an ending because of it. Anyway, tell me more about this, this person that has heavy earth in their chart that wants to reconnect with you. The devil card. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and you could be this person. You could be this earth sign that wants to reconnect. So take it as it resonates. Okay, I feel like this person's going to try to seduce you. I feel like they made they made a wrong choice with this third party. And I feel like they're going to come they're going to come back to you, I feel. I feel like they're recognizing that they made a wrong choice. So I feel like they kind of dove into it. I feel like for some they might have actually projected their feelings for you onto this third party because it's almost like there's this energy with a third party of like illusion. Um, like one of them is in, under this like illusion almost. I don't even know if there could have been like black magic, like, like, um, I'm, I'm hearing like disillusioned, like someone's going to be like disillusioned here. I don't know if it's like black magic or glamour, but there's something weird about it. There's something weird about actually. Okay. So I know what this is trying to say. This is talking about them seducing you. We're going to look into that in a minute, but tell me, just tell me about this third party really quick. Or actually, no, I'm going to look into the third party after this because we already got this laying on the, on the table. Um, I feel like this person's going to try to come back and seduce you. I just, it's like this energy of illusion. I almost feel like they were tired of waiting for you. You were tired of waiting for them. You guys might have even been mirroring each other. It's like something was just kind of at a standstill. I feel like something just wasn't moving quickly enough. And I feel like your person got frustrated. And for whatever reason, it's like the third party was new and exciting and charming. Um, so they might have just taken all their feelings for you and just kind of projected it onto the, the third party. I just feel like this third party was a fantasy. Whoever the third party was, I just keep hearing like disillusionment. I keep, I keep hearing like fantasy. Like there's something... It's like they didn't really get to know each other. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like they're having the long, deep talks or they're... It's like there's a, this illusion of there being something more there than what there is, I guess you could say. It's like 
it's like they both kind of dove in very quickly for the wrong reasons. I feel like your person didn't want to think about you anymore. Um, maybe this third party was like lonely or they were attracted to this part to your person or whatever. But I just feel like over Mercury retrograde, I feel like that that illusion is going to come crumbling down. Like someone's going to realize like, it, oh shit, there's a whole lot that I don't know about this person. I don't know if it's your person finding out of shit about the third party or vice versa. It could even be both. But I think that they're, they're really going to see like, oh, there's nothing deep here or like, there's um there could be miscommunication with mercury retro retrograde verizon salesman was at my door um where was i there could be a synchronicity for someone someone coming knocking on your door but uh yeah it, it's like there's like this illusion like they don't there's not a deep soul connection there and i don't think that there was ever i don't think they ever really necessarily even felt like there was a deep soul connection there maybe they it, it's like they projected what they felt for you onto this other person or they were tired of waiting for you so it was like this person was so new and exciting because it's like oh cool something's happening you know what I mean but but I mean you probably are waiting for this person too like you guys are probably waiting for each other you know it's 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 a two-way street um but Okay, sorry. Actually, I'm going to go ahead. I know I've made it confusing. I'm going to go ahead and look into the third party because I don't think there's a way to I think this is like the, the rest of the storyline, like what comes next. So we're going to look into the third party. So what's going on with Mercury retrograde? There's there's just something there where it's like there's there's some major difference between them. Like it could be like one of them wants kids, one of them doesn't. It could be um, it could be like a major political difference or a major religious difference. I just see like an oh shit moment where it's like something is revealed and they're like, oh, this isn't going to work. Like this, like, like this third party situation, um, like, like, hold up. Like I didn't know you and it could be something really bad. Like it could be like, like racism or sexism or something like that with this third party. It could be like, they just have very different beliefs. Um, and I almost want to say, I don't even, I don't even necessarily feel like they feel a deep soul connection. I feel like some part of them knows that they're like using this third party because they're tired of, of, you know, things not moving forward quickly with you, even though they're probably not even taking any action towards you. So that's kind of on them why it's not moving forward with you. It's like, they're, they're not moving things forward with you. That's why it's not moving forward. Um, I feel like. I feel like on, on your person's end, there's some part of them that's conscious of it. There's there's some part of them that recognizes that they are using this third party as an escape from their feelings from you, from the stress of their life, from whatever. It's like they're using this third party to just temporarily make them happy. Um, or to just temporarily kind of like it just it's just new energy it's something it's a distraction it's something fun and exciting but I feel like as they get to know each other on a deeper level as they because right now it's more of like the lust stage um but I feel like as they start to have deeper conversations there there's going to be a red flag on either your person's end or the karmic's end either way that's just going to be a deal breaker for someone someone's going to be like oh no I cannot I can't deal with someone that has that perspective or I can't deal with someone that has that belief system it's like there's there's something tell me about this because there's almost a sense of desperation on both of their ends like they're both trying to escape from something or they're both trying to and I mean life is hard so I get we all kind of try to escape like I'm not I'm not hating or anything but but it's it just it just doesn't feel solid or real or genuine. Um, I don't feel a deep soul connection there, but I almost feel like they're, uh, how do I explain this energy? I just keep hearing like illusion. So it's, it's almost like with the third party, there was like this illusion of it possibly being a deeper soul connection or it po how do I explain it? No. How do I explain this? I think your person consciously knows it's not a deep soul connection. I think your person consciously knows like, hey, I'm using this person to to make me happy for a little bit and distract me and 
you know, kill some time or whatever. Um, but I think, I think on at least one person's end in that situation, there's someone that's like, oh, maybe there's, maybe there's a deeper connection there. Maybe there's something, maybe there's something more real there. Um, and I feel like as they get to know this person, I think for one thing, they're going to realize this person isn't you. They have a very deep soul connection with, with you. And I think consciously they know that. And I think they're going to try to project that on the third party and find that with the, with a third party. And I feel like they're just going to be really disappointed. Like they're not going <clears> to, <throat> there's just disillusionment. Something's going to come to the surface. That's going to reveal a major incompatibility between them. Tell me more about this third party situation. The lovers, the hierophant, the six of pentacles. Nine of cups. Queen of cups. Queen of Wands, Justice, hmm. tell me more about this. Yeah, Three of Swords, Seven of Swords. Because you get all these positive cards, so it's like that's kind of where they're at now. Projection, like la la land with this third party. Everything they feel for you is being projected onto this third party. Um, I feel like you could be this queen of wands, though. And I feel like, tell me about this queen of wands and the justice. I feel like justice is on someone's side here. Death. The Fool, ooh, okay. Major, ooh, wow, okay. That's a lot of good energy. Death of the Fool, the Ten of Cups, damn. Okay, so. Your spirit guides are saying you have true love either way. Whether this person gets it together soon or not, they're going to make sure that you have your Ten of Cups, that you have true love. The other message I'm getting from this is... I feel like your person needed to go through a transformation and I feel like your spirit guides are kind of using this karmic, this third party to do that. So there's, there's this death, this ending, but then there's the fool. So this is like a death and a rebirth. So I feel like your person could be going through like a spiritual awakening. They're having epiphanies. They're, um, maybe they're even hitting rock bottom. I mean, maybe they're even... Maybe they're even hitting rock bottom and they're doing it with this karmic. So you're being protected from all that, the the tower moment, the chaos, you know what I mean? Like maybe your person has to hit rock bottom to finally learn the, the tough karmic lessons. Maybe they have to go down a self-destructive path to understand, to recognize like, hey, I don't want to be that person anymore. I don't want to repeat these patterns anymore. Um or maybe they have to cheat on this person or go through something with this person to get to a point where they're like, oh shit, I don't want to do that to someone else again. Like they're learning some tough karmic lessons with this third party. Um, so you, it's basically divine justice. This third party is actually not really a bad thing. It actually seems like this third party was possibly even brought in by your spirit guides to like wake this person up somehow. I also feel like there's, there's a huge message I'm getting too that, um, this person is kind of cocky and they think that they can find you in someone else. So they know that they have a deep spiritual connection with you, even if they're in denial about it. And I feel like some part of them is like, well, I'm going to go, you know, there's plenty of fish in the sea. I'm going to go see what else is out there. I bet I can have that kind of connection with someone else too. I'll find it somewhere else. And they're going to learn the hard way that no one is you that no one's going to compare to you like this third party is is going to she's just going to be different than you not better not worse just different she's just not you he or she is just not you and this person I think needed to see that I think that this person needed to kind of learn that the hard way because I think if it's just you and them they're always gonna you know 
it's like if they're intimidated by you or whatever, or they don't know if they can step up for you or they don't know if they can commit to you. It's like with this third party, it's like they can be like, oh, I'm going to, I'll find, I'll find someone similar, but you're, you're not, you're not going to, this person's not going to find someone similar to you. They're really not. So I think it's going to actually make them appreciate you more. <coughs> But yeah, they're definitely in a state of illusion with this third party. There's, there's again, projecting their feelings for, for you onto them. There's a state of happiness right now, but it, it's not solid. There's, there's no foundation there, and there's not going to be a solid foundation there because they're just incompatible long term. Um, so once that's recognized, I think it's going to come crumbling down. This person had to go through this. This person has to go through this transformation if they're going to have the Ten of Cups with you. Normally, I and I don't recommend waiting for a third party. I, th I think if you want to let this go, you can, and your spirit guides will bring you someone new. So it's, But I think your spirit guides are just saying like they, they're doing some work on this person. They are spiritually guiding this person, and right now it's a little bit chaotic. They're going through a death and rebirth, rebirth process, and you might not fully be a part of that or fully aware of that process that this person is going through. But that's necessary. Them going through that that spiritual, you know, this this death and rebirth, this um this awakening, these epiphanies, really hitting rock bottom to the point where they just have to change. That's what's gonna lead to the ten of cups. Um tell me about the three of swords and the seven of swords. Three of wands, ace of cups. God, my allergies. Sorry, guys. What is this King of Cups holding on to? This could even be an ex from their past that they needed to understand that it's not going to happen with them. Like for some of you, they could have gone back to an ex. This is a specific message for somebody, but they could have gone back to an ex um, that they were always kind of just holding on to. Like they had never fully let go of this ex, but they needed to go back, you know, for a second time or for a 10th time or whatever to finally learn the karmic lesson and be like, oh, it's really not ever going to happen with this person. They're going to have the same fights, the same arguments, the same bullshit. It's it's not going to change. Um, tell me more about that. Nine of Wands. <coughs> I feel like this person waits for things to grow, but they cause conflict. Like, they don't... It's like they don't pursue you, or they don't make the effort, and then they get angry at you for that, and then they go try to find, you know, their emotional fulfillment elsewhere, but it doesn't make any sense because it's like... It feels like this person is pushing you away. Like this person, this person might not be very aware of like their body language, of their actions, their words, their mannerisms. Like this person might be, um, I don't know, like they just might not be very self-aware for some reason because it really just feels like it's like they hold on to you and you're not rejecting them. Like you actually love them. The love between you guys is mutual. Like you, you love them or you care about them. Like you want to be close to them, but it's, it's almost like they make up these arguments with you in their mind or they cause conflict like there's like this internal conflict in their mind or they assume the worst or assume that you're going to reject them and then they reject you first and it's like you know eventually they're going to realize that they're the ones that are pushing you away you didn't push them away they they're pushing you away they're they're the one that is entertaining third parties they're the one that is you know not showing interest in you that it, it's like they're the ones that are pushing you away But yeah, there's going to be some kind of heartbreak with that third party. Tell me more about that. Ten of Wands, Two of Cups. Yeah. 
Yeah, someone's going to see it as a burden and let it go. And then there's going to be a two of cups with someone else. Um, I feel like there might even be truth about third parties that, that comes out. Like this person, the karmic might be like, oh, this man, this man like fucks around with a lot of different girls or something like that. Like there might just be some kind of truth that comes out and it, it causes someone to be like, I'm going to move forward. Um, for others, I think it's just incompatibility. Like it's not even anything that can be fixed. It's going to be like, there's like a major political difference. There's a major religious difference, something like that. Yeah, I think your person is going to be feeling lonely, feeling upset, feeling stressed for a while, um, the hangman, but it's going to cause them, you know, to, to have a new perspective. I think they're going to realize that they're also, that they're actually causing a lot of the conflict in their, in their life. Like, I think they're going to realize that they've been coming to you as a king of swords. Like, they haven't been coming to you in a passionate way. They haven't been coming to you in a romantic way. They haven't been coming to you in a gentle way. They have been coming to you as a king of swords. Like, they have been coming to you as someone that's, like, in a in a defensive position. Um, they've been coming to you in this king of swords energy. Someone that's defensive. Someone that's cold. Someone that's guarded. Someone that's, uh, you know, head over heart. Someone that's just not emotionally available, not emotionally open. And so you've been responding to that energy. You've been responding to, it's like they have third parties or they're distant from you or they're, they don't communicate with you or they're, they don't show interest in you. So you respond to that. You respond to that energy and you distance yourself in return. You're like, okay, I guess this person probably doesn't like me. And you kind of, you know, like even if it's upsetting you, you, you still give them their space. You assume you know, look at this man. He's defensive. He's got his sword up. If someone, you go to someone and they have a sword up, you're not going to assume they want to talk to you or cuddle with you or be with you. You're going to be like, oh, this person like hates me or this person is annoyed by me or this person just doesn't want to talk to me. Like, you know what I mean? Like if you see someone with a sword, you're going to leave that person alone. You're going to be like, this man obviously wants to be left alone. Um, I think what this man doesn't recognize though, is that it's that, that he's in this energy. I don't think he realizes that he's in this energy. I think um, we're actually because I've been channeling that message and we're going to get it. We're going to do another reading on that in the near future within the next couple of days, because that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother thing. We'll get into that later. But because um, this is I want to focus on the third party here. But anyway, I do feel like I do feel like he's going to have this epiphany like, oh, shit, I've been the king of swords. No wonder she's being the queen of swords in response to me. You know, if he's the king of cups, you're going to be the queen of cups. If he's the king of wands, you're going to be the queen of wands. You're going to match his energy. And I think that something about that happens with this third party is going to make him recognize that you've just, that he's been causing the chaos in his life. He's been doing it to himself. The distance between the two of you, he's been doing it to himself. He's been causing this distance between the two of you by choosing to continue to be the king of swords. And I think he's going to come at you in more of a knight of cups way. Um, the devil, he is going to try to seduce you. There is, there is true love here, but there is a message to be strong and not because you have a soft spot for this man. You know, there's this innocence, like there's this desire to just cuddle him and and talk to him and have fun with him and just be close to him. And I think it really hurts you that he's been this king of swords. But um, there's this <coughs> there's this energy of, you know, when he presents this offer to you, he's coming very quickly. He's coming very quickly from being in this, you know, thinking he's in love with this karmic and then that the tower falls he recognizes that was all an illusion. He was projecting what he felt for her, for, for you onto her. Um, he's going to come back to you. But you got to be strong and you got to make sure he's coming with a solid offer because there is devil energy connected to this offer he's giving you. So it could be like a sexual offer or something like that. Like you have to make sure it's an actual ace of pentacles, like an actual offer of stability and not just him like being lonely and upset it didn't work out with her and just being confused and just wanting to you know whatever um because you have a soft spot for him so you need to not get caught up in illusion just because of of how you feel about him or about her
But I think that I think that if he comes correct, I think that you'll be receptive. I mean, even if he just comes at like, even if he just starts making, you know, just even taking baby steps and communicating with you and just asking how you're doing, um, making conversation with you, like, you know, messaging you being like, oh, like, you know, you want to, do you want to go out for coffee? Just something, you know what I mean? Something solid. But tell me more about this, uh, this Ace of Pentacles devil energy. Oh, he is also, um, see, that's the thing. He has to go through this epiphany. He's going to have to go through that to understand that you're being the queen of swords because he's being the king of swords. You're letting him take the lead. So whatever he, you're going to, you guys mirror each other. So you're going to, you're going to match his energy. So it's like, I almost feel like, um, when he's like, as he's wanting to come in, it's, <laughs> He's worried you're going to be a queen of swords, but you're only going to be the queen of swords if he's coming in as the king of swords. You'll be the queen of cups if he's coming in as a king of cups, <clears throat> but he's worried you're not going to want to build with him. He's worried you're going to be defensive or you're not going to want to work through things with him. I don't think that's the case, though. Again, it's just it's all about how he presents himself. It's all about whether he actually shows you effort and interest. Or whether he just acts like he just wants to fuck or he just wants a distraction. Like, you're going to respond to his energy accordingly. Yeah, he's afraid that you've closed the cycle out. He's afraid he's going to get rejected. He's afraid. Yeah, he's afraid you're moving things from rough waters to calmer waters by yourself. He's afraid you're like, nope, bye. He doesn't want to give you too long to be in your head. He doesn't want to like leave you in that state for too long. He's like, oh shit, she's probably thinking too much about this. She's pissed. Um, tell me more about this devil offer, this ace of pentacles. King of wands, the sun. It's like, I feel like he's seen the light and he's trying to stand his ground here. He wants success with you. He's just, I feel like he's afraid of arguments with you. But that's part of the energy too, is like, he's going to have to, I don't know what the timeline is on this. Cause I'm getting a lot of like, I don't know how it's all going to come into play for sure. But I just get that energy of like, I think he's going to have at some point, he's going to have some epiphany that he's been the king of swords. He's going to be like, oh, shit, like she was never unavailable. Like she was never distant from me. She was never closed off from me. She was just responding to my energy. She thought I was closed off from her. She thought I didn't want her. And so she responded to that by being distant in return. Like he's going to he's going to recognize that you had those, you know, you had deep feelings for him all along. But you just, you you didn't think he felt the same way or you didn't think that he was open to you. Um, so I think he's going to have to recognize that to come forward with a proper offer because right now it's like he's going to be nervous for a little bit about coming forward with an offer because he thinks you're still going to be the queen of swords. But once he has that recognition, I think he's going to switch his, what's he going to do once he has that recognition that you're being the queen of swords because he's the king of swords. I think that's what switches it up. Um, because then he's going to be like, oh shit, we're mirroring each other. She's matching my energy. So wait a minute. Like if I stop being the king of swords and I actually like show interest, she'll show interest in me back. If I'm flirty with her, she'll actually be flirty with me back. If I ask her on a date she'll say yes and she'll be completely receptive like but I have to take the lead I have to um I have to present her with an offer I have to present her with you know flirting with emotion with some kind of good energy to work with what happens between the two of you once he has that realization I feel like it comes in quick because I feel like this is like loss and being left out in the cold. Tell me about this. 
communication page. Yeah, more communication cards. Um, so I think he's going to, yeah, I think that's like that awareness. Like, oh shit, she wasn't rejecting me. I was rejecting myself. I was rejecting her actually. Yeah, he's going to see that there's like a hidden ten of pentacles there. That there actually is true love here. And I think he's going to want to come quickly. I think he's going to want to come forward and um, match your energy more and give you more of a... I think he might test the waters a little bit, but I think he's going to... Ex... Once he has this realization, I think he's going to start experimenting with you more. You know what I mean? Like actually going up to you and like making conversation like, hey, how was your day? I'm really glad you're here. Like, um, you know, what are you doing later? You want to go out for coffee or like messaging you and just saying like, hey, I was just thinking about you or just just something. I think he's going to be really pleasantly surprised that you're way more open and way more receptive to him than he ever thought you were. Um. Yeah, it's, it's a really good energy. I'm going to put this out there for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this resonates. And um, yeah, thank you for the support.